In many cases, you will use datasets that have not been created by yourself. As you want to know what data you're working with, however, you first need to get a good understanding for what your data looks like. So how do we do that? In data science, practitioners would call the process of exploring and understanding your data exploratory data analysis, or short EDA. The main goal of this activity, as mentioned, is to explore your dataset to understand what types of data it contains and in what quality the data is. In that sense, we ask ourselves, what does my data tell me? What attributes does my data have? And what is the quality of my data? What data types are represented? Among other questions. As we know that we can have numerical or categorical data, we also need to have different methods for analyzing them. Let's first look at numerical data. As we are dealing with numbers in this case, we can make use of many measures as they are defined as part of descriptive statistics. The most commonly used measures are the ones included in the so-called five number summary, which are extreme values, that is minimum and maximum values, the lower and upper quantile, or to be more precise, 25% and 75%, as well as the median, which is the 50% quantile. In case you're not familiar with the concepts of quantiles, the 25% quantile, as an example, calculates the value that represents the 25% threshold. This means that 25% of the data points contained in your dataset have a value that is lower than the calculated one. The other 75% have a higher value. The same then goes for the 75% quantile and the median at 50%. The values of upper and lower quantile together, with minimum and maximum values, already provide a good overview of potential outliers in your dataset. If the maximum value is much bigger compared to the upper quantile, then it is likely that your dataset contains some outliers. Same goes for minimum and lower quantile. In addition to the five number summary, people usually also calculate the mean and standard deviation of the dataset. Similar to the example before, looking at the difference of mean and median can provide information on potential outliers. The reason for this is that the median represents the threshold for which half of the data points have smaller values and the other half bigger values. For the mean, we, also, we mostly use the arithmetic mean. Therefore, outliers with very big or small values can distort the value of the mean quite a lot. Together with the standard deviation, which provides information on the statistical error margin of your data points, you can also gain some insights on the distribution of your data points. For the purpose of understanding distribution in your data, however, plotting the respective distribution gives a much better picture. Some of the most commonly used plots include box plots or violin plots, which show different quantiles of the dataset and the histogram as well as the density plot of your data. In the histogram of your dataset, you can see the values on the x-axis and the number of corresponding data points on the y-axis. This then draws a picture of the distribution of your dataset, where you can also see potential outliers, or whether a specific value or value range is overrepresented. All of those all of those methods are used to describe a single attribute of your dataset. In some cases, however, you also want to see how two different attributes are related to each other. This can be done using the correlation coefficient, which is a value between minus one and plus one. A value closer to one means that with an increase in attribute A, you will also get a similar increase in attribute B. If the coefficient, however, is closer to minus one, an increase in attribute A will cause a similar effect on attribute B but decreasing. With a value close to zero, you can tell that two attributes do not correlate with each other at all, meaning that it is not possible to relate them to each other in a statistical context. Now, why is this important? Usually we want to avoid using multiple attributes that provide the same information. For example, we could have a dataset that contains the temperature in Celsius as well as Fahrenheit, which are obviously highly correlated. Having multiple correlated attributes might worsen the performance of your machine learning, as it could become numerically unstable, which we want to avoid. Those attributes will then most likely be removed from our dataset. 
With all of these measures, we can get a good understanding about the numerical data in our dataset. But what about the categorical data? Obtaining more information about your categorical data is rather straightforward. You basically want to understand how many different labels you can expect for a certain attribute and how many data points are labeled as such. For this, you mostly will create simple bar charts where the x-axis represents the different possible labels and the y-axis, once again, the number of data points. You can also combine multiple attributes, for example, all different labels for the attribute occupation, but only for data points that are labeled as female in the attribute gender. On the one hand, this tells you about the distribution of your data. On the other hand, you can again tell whether a certain label is over or underrepresented, which then could cause an unwanted bias in your machine learning model. Regardless of whether you look at numerical or categorical values, you also want to calculate the number of missing values for both. Missing values tells you how many data points are missing information for the respective attribute. For example, some people might not have provided information about their gender, thus the attribute gender does not contain any value in their cases. For numeric values, a missing value could also show a zero in your dataset, depending on the software you use to store your data. With all the information available to us using the explanatory data analysis, we are then settled to continue with data pre-processing.